everyone. My name is Jasmine. I'm one of the senior advisors here. It's nice to meet you all. Um, and here today we do have the famous uh, Chef Carlette. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> um, so as you guys may not know, she was trained at New England Culinary Institute in Vermont. Um, she also earned her Bachelor's of Fine Arts from the School of Art Institute of Chicago, here where I'm at now. Um, a little bit about her is she does own several businesses. So she does have her own restaurant. She also has a bed and breakfast um, and a wedding cake baking business as well. Did I say something wrong, Shell? No, that's those are businesses I used to have. Oh, so I not anymore. Know. She can still make you guys a wedding cake if you need her to. Oh, I can sure <laughs> teach you how to make one. You, you, that is like not a problem. Sorry, Jasmine, I didn't want, I didn't want, I didn't mean to stop you, but they would want no, to I slept if <laughs> they thought I was teaching at a scoffier and doing all that. So, uh, oh. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Well, go ahead, Chef. Do you want to take over from here? Sure, sure. The welcome, sure. everyone, to my kitchen in Los Angeles, and welcome to our Escoffier demo of Nutella Semifredo. And if you wonder what a Semifredo is, Semifredo is Italian for half frozen. And actually, this is a great way to make an ice cream like dessert, creamy, rich, and delicious without an ice cream maker. Nothing wrong with an ice cream maker, but they do take up real estate in our kitchen. And some of us, like me, have a very small kitchen, and I just don't have the space for an ice cream maker. So uh, I'm, there is, there, this is the workaround. So there's a couple steps to making this Nutella Semifredo. And I just want to go over ingredients. Oh, and you have the recipe. Yes. Neil? Yes. Or, um, yes. Okay. So this recipe uses Nutella, which is available. It's usually with the jam, jellies, and peanut butter in the supermarket. And if you've never tried it, it's a mixture of chocolate and hazelnut, and it is just fantastic. Put it in the chat if you like Nutella. If you don't like Nutella, you could substitute peanut butter and get a semi-fredo, a chocolate semi-fredo that tastes like a Reese's peanut butter cup, and the amount would be the same. You could also use cashew butter or almond butter. You just want to make sure it's stirred really well so there's no separation of the oil because that would throw off your semi-fredo. Yeah, absolutely, Michelle, you can sub peanut butter. All right, and then the chocolate I'm using is Baker's chocolate. It's again, a supermarket chocolate, really good company. The one important thing is it, it's really best if you buy a chocolate where the percentage, see my fingers right here, the percentage is on the box. This box of chocolate was $2.99, pretty reasonable. So um, I just wanted to, I just didn't want you to think I was using a bunch of expensive foopy ingredients to make this. Everything is accessible. Now, in order to keep demo short, I, uh, I actually, um, did a few things ahead, like the um, the whipped cream. Oh, and I saw that question. Yes, you could substitute milk chocolate. That would be yummy. And uh, it's the same amount and the method is the same. All right, let's get going. So I did a few things ahead, like I did whip the cream. If you look at the, when you look at the recipe and we have the recipe for you, the first thing it says to do is to whip the cream and put it in the refrigerator. So we'll take a look at that in a second, okay? So the team has the form, the link to the recipe for you. So don't worry, don't worry. Just, I will, I will talk about the ingredients as I go, and then very soon you'll be able to download the recipe if you can't already. All right, so behind me, on the stove, I have a double boiler set up. 
I have a small saucepan with about an inch of water at a low rolling boil. In a medium size heat proof bowl, I have four egg yolks, 50 grams of sugar, and two ounces of milk. And this is going to, and I'm gonna stir this all up quick. Like that. Now what I'm, and then the next thing that's gonna happen is this is gonna go over the double boiler or bain-marie. Sometimes we call it a bain-marie. And I'm going to let this cook until it thickens slightly. And I'll show you exactly how that looks. It's going to become really frothy. And then it's so cool. But this technique is actually Zabaione technique, which is a classic Italian pastry uh, sauce, pastry base. So um, super cool. In French, it's called Zabaione, but in Italian, it's Zabaione. Now I was married to an Italian chef. In French, whoops. Someone's super cool is. Oh my God. And then my watch starts talking to me. I was married to an Italian chef. So I always say Zabaione. Now you can turn down your heat and you're gonna keep whisking. You guys can see right here. Now the bowl is gonna heat up. So I have a dry towel right here. You're gonna whisk it until the foam subsides a little bit. We don't want our semi-fredo to have raw eggs in it. So this is the first step. doesn't take long. Now you could, you could use other liquid besides milk. You could use coffee if, and, uh, or you could use orange juice if you wanted like a chocolate orange flavor. So you can see how it's beginning to thicken up. It's, the eggs don't look raw anymore. It's gonna go back on for just a moment and we'll take a temperature. You'll start to see tracks on the bottom of the, of the bowl. Let's see what we got here. I want it to be 150. And that's it. We're at 160 degrees. Turn that water off. And we want to wipe the bottom of the bowl so we don't get water on our station. There we go. And here's that chopped chocolate. Remember I showed you the box. So it takes four ounces or 113 grams of chocolate. So that was that whole little box. 
we're going to stir that in. And then we're also going to add the Nutella. And I measured my Nutella on parchment paper so I could just kind of see what I'm doing. So much easier. Parchment paper does break down in the landfill. So we are still baking sustainably, which as future bakers and pastry chefs is very important for you guys to think about. All right, so let's recap. The egg yolks, the milk, and the sugar. Uh, the first sugar, there's actually two sugars. I whisked over a double boiler until the mixture was about 150 degrees and then pulled it off the heat, wipe the bottom of the bowl, add the chocolate and the Nutella. And you can see that the heat from the, the mixture melted the chocolate and it's beautiful. So now we're gonna set this aside. The next thing we're gonna do is make a Swiss meringue. And a Swiss meringue, you guys may already know, but a Swiss meringue is when we take egg whites and we add sugar and a clean whisk. And we whisk them together. And now this is gonna go over the double boiler. And I have to, this, I'm gonna to have to say, um, Jasmine, this is where things are gonna get a little bit noisy pretty soon. So I'm gonna have you mute me, okay? When the mixer starts, you can mute me and then I'll wave when we're ready to come back. Okay. okay. Excellent, is thank fine. you. So what You're I'm welcome. doing is I'm just using a hand whisk to mix this. And now this is going back on the double boiler. Our double boiler is getting a good workout. And I'm gonna cook this to 145 degrees because one of the reasons we're cooking the egg yolk, sugar, and milk to 150 and the egg whites and sugar to 145 for our Swiss meringue is we wanna make sure that our eggs are cooked enough so that there are no more foodborne pathogens present in our eggs. The only thing that kills them is heat. So foodborne illness associated with eggs dies at 144 in egg whites and at 148 about in whole eggs. But you'll learn all that. We can't use raw eggs. They're just, is this semi-fredo is not gonna be baked. Somebody put in the chat, I'm gonna ask a question. Why do I need to keep whisking these eggs, the egg whites? And why did I have to keep whisking the first, the base with the egg yolk, sugar, and milk? Okay, so Judith says, so they don't cook. Exactly, that's it exactly. So, so I see see everyone is all on the same page about that answer. Oh, that's great. Now, back in the day, back in the way day, back in the way day. Um, so if you look in old cookbooks, I just don't want you to be shocked if you're a person who likes to look at older recipes. But oh, now we're, we're there. 
the temperature used to be 120. But in modern times, the, uh, the recommendation is higher. And we want to be safe. We never, ever, ever want to make anyone sick. Oh my God. I don't think I've ever made anybody sick. All right, now, Jasmine, I mean, it's gonna be about three minutes. So everyone, I'm gonna mix this. I'm gonna start on low, make sure it's not gonna hit me. And once it starts mixing, I'm gonna increase to high until it's thick and fluffy, all right? So Jasmine's gonna talk to you guys while this happens. We're good? Yes, we're good. Okay, guys, so while she is mixing that, we're gonna have a little fun. Um, so Nicole, actually the link will be posted after um, it's over. So just look out for your emails, okay? Um, so I do have a couple questions for you guys. The first question is, what do you love about baking? So go ahead and drop your answers down in the chat. What do you guys love about baking? <laughs> Sandy said the end product, me too. <laughs> Shante, the end product, same. <laughs> okay, it makes people happy. It brings love. I love that. The smile that you have. Yes, yes. Yes, it is very, very therapeutic. I definitely agree with that one. Let's see. The art of it. Good job, Victoria. Yes, yes. How simple the ingredients are. You can literally bake with a little bit of nothing. Sugar is always the main ingredient. Okay, give us a second. We're going to go ahead and... Give us one second while we get um, Chef on me. Let's bear with us one second, guys. We're going to try to, okay, there it goes. Perfect, perfect. Yes, the expressions that people get seeing the end product. So it looks like we're everyone is on the same page. It's therapeutic, the end product for me. Mm, the multiple ways to make the same item. That's actually the first time I've heard that. Marie said that it's a challenge. Oh, okay, never mind. Chef is ready. That went quicker than I thought it, well, went quicker than yesterday because I have one of these in the freezer because we're all about magic of TV. That's how we roll. All right, so we have our chocolate base and then I went ahead and I whipped the cream uh, earlier and I put it in the fridge. Now, you may find that when it sits in the refrigerator, it gets a little bit soft. So you're just going to take your whisk, clean whisk, and just refresh it. We want it to be about a, about a medium peak. Now, what, what that means, we want it to be not over whipped. But you want to be able to see the tracks of the whisk. And then if you're doing it in the mixer, which is totally fine, you want to stay with it 
And as it's going around and around, once you see the tracks, then stop, you know, then slower down. And because um, when the cream is over whipped, it begins to, it can actually, if we kept whipping, I mean, my arm would fall off, but we can turn this into butter if we want to. So we have to be very careful. All right, that looks good. It's gonna slide a little bit, that's all right. There we go, that's fun, isn't it? Don't you love that? So it's perfect. When you can turn it without it falling out and it's not over whipped, you're good to go. Okay. Okay, now, Here's how it works. Chocolate base, meringue, cream. It's always that way. The cream is always last. There are several desserts and pastry that go work like this. And you want to whip the meringue oops, until it's at a good medium peak. All right, looks just like that. Sorry for the noise. I'm gonna get this out of the way. And the next thing I'm gonna teach you is how to make a sacrifice. And I know you're gonna say, chef, I make a lot of sacrifices in my life. I don't need to be taught this. I get it. But what I mean is sacrifices for pastry. When we have a base that's on the heavy side and we're beginning to add lighter ingredients, this is like a cloud, we're going to actually just start with about a third of the mixture and we're going to just basically stir it into the base to lighten this base mixture so that these two are more similar. Then what we're going to do is we're gonna add the rest. And you want to get all of it. The pros always scrape their bowls until they are super clean. All right, now I'm gonna fold a little bit more like a normal person where I drag my spatula through the center and I spin the bowl a half turn as I go. Oh, I wish you guys were here. It smells so good. Now what's a little bit tricky, that chocolate is heavy. So we have to make sure we scrape up from the bottom. So that looks good. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our cream. But same thing, even with the meringue, this is heavier than the cream. So I'm going to make a sacrifice and that's what the French call it. About a third. And my cream is in no way over whipped. When your cream gets over whipped, you'll see that it has jagged edges and you can almost see the little tiny pieces of butter forming. Those are actually called fat globules forming as the cream, as the water is beginning to separate out. Okay. Now I'm gonna add the rest of it. Now, semi-fredos are usually just put in a loaf pan that's lined with plastic wrap. And this size semi-fredo will go in, a, in the largest size loaf pan, which is a nine by five by three. But if you want to do smaller ones, you can. If you have some mini loaf pans, you could even mold it in a bowl. Anything that could go in the freezer that you can line with plastic wrap will work. 
All right, no streaks, little bit of streaks. So I'm gonna keep going. And by the way, when you're working with the spatula and you're folding, the curb side is toward the bottom of the bowl. Now that may seem obvious, but you would be surprised. Okay, great. Now I have already prepared my loaf pan and I have lined it with plastic wrap, but here's a tip you're not gonna hear everywhere. If you ever have to line a pan or a bowl with plastic wrap, what you wanna do is take a spray bottle filled with water and just give it a light mist of water and your plastic wrap will go in much easier. So there's your, there's your tip for the day. All right, this is a nine by five by three inch loaf pan lined all the way up to the top with plastic wrap. And it's gonna take all of this. But again, you could do little ones. You could do whatever you want now that you know the technique. That's the thing about coming to school. You learn about ingredient function, you learn about technique, and then once you're done with all that, you can really be creative. Okay. Uh, Chef, Cindy wants to know if you can skip the plastic wrap. What? Can you skip the plastic wrap? No, unfortunately, I, I, know, I know we try to be super sustainable, but you can't. There's no way to, unless you wanna, well, Jasmine, if, you, if you're not worried about presentation and you're just gonna casually, you know, maybe with a silicone hard side, you know, straight-sided spatula, cut it out of the pan, then sure, no plastic wrap. But if you're gonna present it and you wanna slice it cleanly, it's the only way to get it out of the pan. If you don't use the plastic wrap and dip this in water, hot water and unmold it, it, it thaws too much. It's a mess. Okay, did that help? All righty. Okay. So now this is gonna go in the freezer but if you noticed in the photograph in your recipe, there's chocolate curls on top. So I'm gonna show you how to make quick, fast chocolate curls without tempering, without buying fancy chocolate. And we're gonna put some of these on top and it's gonna go right in the freezer. Okay. So all I did was I melted regular chocolate. And I spread it thin on a piece of parchment paper and I threw it in the refrigerator. The tool is kind of important, but you could use a teaspoon. This is called a melon baller. And I'm gonna use the large end and I just am gonna scrape the top of my chocolate. and you get these cute little chocolate curls. So that's how that was super easy. And uh, we have to, as pastry chefs and bakers, we have to have some quick tricks up our sleeve because things like things just happen. Sometimes you need a quick garnish. And uh, and the chocolate that's left over, I just remelt it and I use it over and over. And the, the more you press, the more curl you get. So, all right. So we will sprinkle these on top of our semi-fredo. Oopsie. If I touch this, it's going to melt. 
So I'm gonna use the parchment paper to help me. It's really warm in my kitchen. So we're gonna, and what I do, I'll put a piece of plastic wrap on the top, but I let it get semi frozen before I do that. So I'm just gonna put it in the freezer, wipe my hands. We always wanna work clean. And I'm gonna swap it out for the one that I made yesterday. This will keep in the freezer for a month if it's well wrapped. You need a cutting board. And this is where the rubber heat, this is where the rubber hits the road. Sorry, I had to get my other cutting board. There we go. So I know you're thinking, oh my God, the garnish is on top. What is she gonna do? Remove the bottom plastic wrap, put this cutting board on top and flip it. Here we go. All right. So if you ever wonder how to do that, that's how you do it, okay? And then the next thing is just to cut it. If you have a little bit of sauce, you know, a chocolate sauce or some fresh fruit, that's a really nice garnish. I'm gonna actually use my Santoco knife. So I don't really have, I, my chef's knife is not in the kitchen. It's in storage. And then this is very rich. So then we're just gonna cut it. But the hot knife, whoops, I needed to get my knife a little bit hotter. Wipe it dry and then cut straight down. And that's it. You garnish it up nice and pretty, however you like. And that is your ice cream, your semi fredo without having to have an ice cream maker taking up real estate in your kitchen. Any questions, Jasmine? Let's see, let's see. Do anyone have questions? <laughs> questions, we'll take a couple questions. Everyone is saying thank you, thank you. Oh. Well, it's really, a, it's really a fun one. And uh, sorry, I don't have uh, more of a plating for you guys, but you can, you're creative. You'll do your own thing with it. Oh yes. yeah, Matthew. So, and then, well, once you, that's the thing. Once you learn the technique, then you can get creative. So Matthew asked a question about layering. You know, you could, you could layer in crunches. You could layer in like a layer of jam for some fruit. You could layer, you could, you could really get creative. You know that ice cream line to lente that has the different layers of 
you know, crunch and chips yes. and it's just so good. I mean, it's really hard just to eat, not to eat the whole thing. I mean, I'm just saying, you know, like, especially when you're watching only murders in the building, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's just, I think it's impossible to like put the rest in the freezer, but you guys know what I mean. You can, uh, Matthew, you could get super creative like this. The only thing that I wouldn't use is fresh fruit because fresh fruit is going to collect a lot of ice crystals in the freezer and uh, that could be problematic. But um, again, a really good quality jam, crunches, Rice Krispie treats. Oh my God, we could go for an hour with suggestions in the chat, right, Jasmine? We just wouldn't. Yes. Stop. You could now. Also could this recipe be uh, dairy free? No. Oh yes, it can be dairy free, not egg free. So you could use all. I would use almond milk, and use um, coconut. I would use the coconut. Um, Whole Foods sells it, other places sell it, but um, like the coconut version of Cool Whip and, 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 and it's really delicious. It's really, it's another one that's hard to not go back and, you know, just get another spoonful just to make sure that it's okay. You know, is it okay? Yeah, it's fine. You just keep going back. So um, that's what I would use. So almond milk or coconut milk, and then some sort of non-dairy whipped topping. You know, you don't have to whip it. You buy it frozen. You just thaw it in the refrigerator and you fold it in like I did at the end. And it'd be okay. Yummy. Okay. Yeah. And what type and of chocolate it. did you use? I used Baker's semi-sweet from the grocery store aisle, but you could use um, milk chocolate. You could use uh, bittersweet chocolate. And yes, Jeanette, you can fold the meringue into the zabayone and pour it over fresh fruit, like beautiful berries. You could even take a creme brulee torch and caramelize the top, grab a couple of spoons, plate it beautifully. And it would like, it would like, it, you would be like in, it'd be like being in Venice or Tuscany, you know, super classic Italian uh, dessert. Yeah. So this is what I used, you guys, $2.99, nothing, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. I would never, ever, ever, I know I have some students in the audience and they can, they, they can back me up. I never throw curveballs, ever. I try with, our goal is to make everything as accessible as possible, right? Right. Now, what type of chocolate did you use for the garnish as well? That was just chocolate I had in the chocolate box in my <laughs> pantry. So it was a combination of Ghirardelli chocolate chips, uh, some Kroger, chocolate chunks. I'm full disclosure here. It was quite a little adventure in the, um, I keep, I store my chocolate in an airtight container. I have one pantry, one shelf dedicated entirely to my baking ingredients. And I really recommend that you guys think about organizing if you can. I know it's kind of challenging when we have families and we live with other people, but if you can organize your stuff while you're in the course and everything's in one spot, it really makes your life easier. So in my baker's pantry, I store my chocolate in an airtight container that's clear so I can see exactly what I have and do I need to get more when I go to the market. And one last thing, Jasmine, I promise. I know I'm, I'm beating this like a dead horse, which is actually a horrible expression. I'm so sorry. I don't know whoever thought that up. But if you guys think about building your baker's pantry, you know, especially if you have time waiting for school to start, 
you'll know at a glance if you're running low on something because you want to be in a position to have all your ingredients on hand so you can get things done. Anything else? Let's see, let's see. So would frozen fruit work without developing crystals? No, it's, well, I would actually be more inclined to use freeze-dried fruit. Like, um, you can tell my kitchen's so small, I'm just grabbing stuff and showing it. <laughs> oh my God, where is it? I can't, I can't reach it. But like um, freeze-dried strawberries, even banana chips would be kind of fun if you like chocolate and banana together. Um, just because the, if the mo there's no moisture, but you still have flavor and you have texture. I'm so sorry I can't grab those. They're just not, I need to be like, uh, who was the guy with the, the arms that just, you know, the arms, some superhero. I mean, I am a baking superhero, but I just, I'm not Spider-Man. I have had to come Inspector to- Inspector Gadget. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 exactly. Yes, yeah. So yeah, get creative. There's also recipes, you know, there you can, you can go once you learn the technique, because this is a great basic one, you can look on the internet and, um, and, uh, and, and, you know, get some ideas. And uh, uh, yeah, I am on social media. If you have questions about the, you know, or you can just ask your rep, that would be better. Um, ask your rep and she will forward the question on to me. Ask your coach. Yes, yes. Well, thank you again, Chef. I hope you all um, enjoyed the presentation as much as I did.